we're going to do something we haven't done in a while, which is a gigantic tasting. This is a mystery six pack, a mystery half dozen from the uh, now quite famous in my channel, Naked Wines. I got them to send me these six um, Australian wines just so I can review them on my channel and see if there's anything that we're, that, that's actually worth messing with. This is stuff I wouldn't usually buy with the exception to the last two, which I think are right up my alley, if anyone really knows me. So, we're going to start off with whites, always start off with your white whites, then your more complex whites, and then um, in the middle I've got my rosé, and then you finish off with your bigger reds. So, let's see what we're dealing with, we've got a Chardonnay, we've got a Sav Blanc, and we've got a Pinot Gris. If that's the case, the Chardonnay should be the most complex out of the three. So I'm going to be going with the uh, Sav Blanc, the Chardonnay, then the Pinot Gris. Had it been a Pinot Grigio, I would have had it second because as we know now on the channel, Grigio is a lighter style of white, whereas Gris is a far more complex style of white. So, let's go for it. Alright, Daryl Rex Groom, DRG Sav Blanc. Now, Cheers. Yeah. Beautiful. That gorgeous passion fruit note really, really, really like um, advertises high quality Sav Blanc. That beautiful, uh, slight acidity. That florality, like a uh, not chamomile, the w w w rose hip. A fantastic, like, rose hip tea characteristic. Yeah, that smells beautiful. Beautiful acidity, good structure. You could have part in the wind. <laughs> My creaky old shed can barely handle it. Anyway, I find it slightly too acidic for like a beginner to come and approach. For me, I quite appreciate it. I think that there's a level of VA, volatile acidity in here that would make it a bit more difficult to approach than I'd like to. I think I might move on from that one. That one, not too bad. You have to understand how to appreciate wines that have higher acidity. I think for an average Sauvignon Blanc drinker, especially those that go straight to like Marlboro or like Central Otago, New Zealand, looking for this stuff, I don't think it'll be up the alley. All right, next up, Pinot Gris. Oh, no, 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 no. Pinot Gris, then Chardonnay. I feel like that's the best way to do it. I want Pinot Gris this time. All right, Carpenter's Rocks. Let's give this one a go. The Limestone Coast. Let's see what this is dealing with right now. Oh, wow. You know what, I'm going to pour this out, re-pour one more time, just to make sure my nose isn't clashing from blending, but this smells, oh man, that smells beautiful, beautiful lime, beautiful like semi-sweetness, sort of like a lime cordial, it's fantastic, gorgeous on the nose, um, you can smell the crisp acidity, Mate, there's nothing wrong with the nose here. It's, it's, quite, it's quite light, not much going on. There's more going on inside the Sav Blanc. But to be honest, this smells cleaner. This smells a lot more approachable to the layman. Hmm, that's good. I'm gonna swallow that. That is so delicious. Yeah, that, that is screaming for oysters. Screaming for it. That is so elegant. Gorgeous viscosity, the beautiful thickness in the mouth. It is made in the style of Pinot Gris properly for once. Last time we tried um, Pinot, Pinot Gris and Pinot Grigio from Naked Wines, they had messed it up and the Grigio had a lot more character than the Gris. This time they have made it in true Pinot Gris style. 
where they have let it develop on the vine for a bit longer. You can taste that complexity coming through. Mmm. That's crack. It's a shame we're going to pull that out. But as you can see, i got a lot to get through. <laughs> Understandably, Limestone Coast is making some pretty cracker stuff. Have one more sip before I toss, <laughs> before I toss this poor thing out. Mmm. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. Creamy. Alright. Round. Very balanced acid. Beautiful, beautiful semi-sweetness. When I say semi-sweetness, I'm not talking about actual sugar in the wine. I'm talking about the alcohol level balancing out everything till it has a much more approachable palate overall. Absolutely. Absolutely phenomenal. Beautiful minerality. Whoever made this should be very proud of themselves. Okay, Fuzzy and May, Hunter Valley Shardy. Now, Fuzzy and May make some of the best semi on I've ever tasted. I've never had the Chardonnay. And in general, I don't mind the Chardonnay from uh, Hunter Valley. Hunter Valley in, in and of itself is a fantastic wine region. Very Ooh. underrated. Let's have a look at the cut. Hey, you know what? Let's pour. I always keep forgetting. I always make a freaking full pour. Here we go. Cheers. Oh, wow. That smells crazy. What the hell's going on there? Wow, I've never had a Chardonnay that smells like this. Orange blossom. Um, and like overly sweet plums that have been left out on the vine for like way too freaking long, eh? Nectarine. That is unbelievably complex. Fuzzy and me. Oh, that is delicious. Mm. That is just so good. And you know what? You know why I respect these guys? I'm not even going to check the label. I'm positive. This Chardonnay has not seen oak at all. There's no vanilla, there's no obnoxious uh, timber that's just been shoved into the fucker. It's just so nicely made. It's a Chardonnay that anyone can approach, anyone can drink, and anyone can be bloody proud to, 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 to have inside their cellar. That is just gorgeous. That is freaking gorgeous. Really, it is. It doesn't tell me whether, whether, whether it's actually been oaked or not. I'm, I'm 97% sure that if they put any oak on this thing, it's minuscule at best. This is stainless steel all the way, 12.5% alcohol, nice and light, beautiful and delicate, absolutely fantastic, fantastic, fantastic wine. I refuse to pour that. Mm. So far, two of these three have knocked it out of the park. Style-wise and flavor-wise. Hard to believe. Rosé, Margaret River. Good place to make it. Because Margaret River, as we all know, exceedingly famous for the Cap Sav. So let's see. This time I'm, I'm learning. That's lush. Okay. Okay, I'm trying I'm, I'm trying to like clean my mind. Rose is one of those things that are very, very, very difficult to identify. Because it is so close to being the middle ground between a very light white and a very light red that you can easily start making things up just to convince yourself that they're there. Okay. I'm getting the sharpness of honeysuckle. Um, if you, I'm not sure if honeysuckle is like a thing that happens anywhere else in many countries, but over here in Australia, I remember as a kid, you get these long, uh, almost weed-looking things 
called honeysuckles or little uh, yellow flowers. If you bit them in, bit into them, they'd have this beautiful, beautiful flavor of like young lime, uh, lemon, and um, and like a floral uh, chamomile. I'm getting that in spades here. But I'm also getting like uh, some degree of uh, what's the name of that jam? That super, super, super thick uh, carob molasses. Where it's just coming down there, that thick, jammy carob, this light, zingy lemon. It's quite an interesting rose. It's something that you really do have to think about a little bit. It's such an interesting one. I'm even getting like hints of like um, pineapple coming through right at the very, very back. It's quite lovely. It's surprising on the palate. That's all I can say. Like it, it, it tastes like everything I just said, but I'm not sure if it's a good thing. Like there's, um, I feel like they uh, they shot a lot of um, winemaking expertise in this, but they seem to have forgotten that rosé is just supposed to be light and easy drinking. Um, even the provincial like pro province style rosés aren't these super complex rosés and they're some of the best in the world, if not the best in the world. I'm not saying that this is a bad wine, I'm just saying that they tried to overdo it just that little bit. I love Left Hook in and of itself, they make some fantastic wine. This, I might have to pass on. Okay, let's get into the big plates. Now, I've talked about Al Palazzo a lot. Um, in fact, my last uh, my last video, it was his Grand Vintage um, Sparkling Tazzy that I ranked at the higher end of the uh, of the wines for any occasion list. So I'm quite excited, like quite excited, because this comes from New South Wales. That's where uh, me and my family live. So, understandably, I'm quite excited to represent a little bit. So Cap Sav from New South Wales. That could be virtually anywhere in New South Wales, however. So let's have a look. What a beautiful colour. Pitch black, very young, 2020. But you know what? I'm calling it young, but it's been it's been aged for two years in bottles, so we should be uh, we should be quite excited about that. I love I like it when uh, it hits the new year and I realise that all my vintages have just gone up an extra year. Let's have a look. I'm just aerating it. Capsav needs to breathe that little bit, otherwise it can't uh, um, show off its characteristics properly. Let's have a go. Oh, what? Vanilla. Black currant. Pepper. Eucalyptus. This smells fantastic. That was knocked right out of the park. That is gorgeous. I can even taste like deep dark chocolate. That is delightful. That to, to think that you can get something of that complexity from a mix of ranges. Like I think Mr. Blasio, he's he's a, a true young winemaker of of real integrity. He, he makes things with real passion and like real passion and heart. It's quite lovely to see. Like, I think the bloke's only a couple of years older than me, and to think that he's managed to make that much complexity, or place that much complexity, into a blended region wine. That is fantastic. Absolutely delicious. Well done, my friend. So far, Naked Wines has been proving quite, quite skilled. That's three for five. Now, this last one, I think it's me uh, just, it's a foregone conclusion. It's Sam Puckett. Okay, single vineyard, gentle and vineyard, Shiraz. 
I know that this is good. There's no ifs, ands, or maybes. I'm gonna quickly rinse out the glass. Let's see what is happening with Mr. Puckett. He's probably one of my fine, like my favorite winemakers in all of Naked Wines. Someone that deserves to be respected. Hmm. Come on. Oh, man. Now, I refuse to pour this. Menthol. Tobacco. Cease. Oh my god, everything is just piling up. That eucalyptus is coming through nicely. Fantastic oak integration. This has been made so carefully. That is something that anyone would be proud to drink. Oh, mate. God bless. Oh, that is just unreal. I'm not going to pour that out. That one's for me to enjoy now. All right. Ultimately, what does this wine tasting tell you? Even a famous winemaker needs to stick to what they know and what they're good at. Limestone Coast is producing some of the best Pinot Gris I've ever tasted and whoever, who, who, who made this? Alright, Al Schweiger Kennel. This guy has someone to look at. Or well, this gal, I have no clue. Fuzzy and Maze are legends. Hunter Valley is underrated for all white wines. Margaret River has the capacity to make fantastic rosé. However, they need to simplify what they're doing. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit too confusing on the palate. Mr. Palazzo, legend alive. New South Wales has the capacity to make fantastic quality Cabernet. And when, and when worse comes to worse, say fuck it and go for Sam Bucket. He's a legend. That's some of the best red that you put into your mouth. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe. And I look forward to talking to you again on the next video. Have a great day.